Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Courtney, and if you've seen my videos before, you probably have noticed that this one looks pretty different, and that's because this is my first travel video. So earlier this year, I traveled to Pakistan. Now you may be asking yourself, why did you choose Pakistan? And uh, I had a pretty good reason. <laughs> um, I actually went and got married. Uh, my husband is from Pakistan, and we are currently uh, in a long distance relationship because we are going through the visa process. Um, and that is torture. <laughs> if you ever want me to make a video on that in the future, if that's something that you're interested in, um, we can tell you a little bit more about that process. Um, but I am learning quite a lot. <laughs> but I wanted to share my experience traveling over there, as well as the delicious food that I got to try and the beautiful historical places that I got to visit. So this video is going to be a little bit more of a sit down story time on the traveling process. And I'll also show you the hotel that I got to stay in. But first, I feel like I need to give a little bit of a geography lesson. Before I planned this trip, I didn't quite know exactly where Pakistan was on the map. And I feel like a lot of my friends and family didn't either. And I feel like some of them probably still don't know. But Pakistan is in South Asia. It shares borders with Iran, Afghanistan, China, and India. And I feel like a lot of people, especially in the Western world, have this idea of what Pakistan is like. Uh, but it's not really true. And it's not this hot desert area that I feel like a lot of people think it is. Um, I would say, kind of think of the US. It's a large area and depending on what region you go to, you're gonna have different landscapes. I was actually very surprised to find out that there's beaches, there's mountains, there's areas that get snow. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not what everybody thinks it is. Now, before I could actually go to Pakistan, I had to get a visa and it took me about six weeks to get my visa, but I would probably apply for it a little sooner next time in case I run into the snags that I ran into this time. So when I applied, you either had to put in your hotel confirmation or sponsorship information. And I went ahead and put in the hotel confirmation. But within about 24 hours, I got an email saying that they needed my sponsor information. So I told my husband, he went and got a sponsorship affidavit. It's basically just an affidavit saying that he knew who I was, that he would be responsible for me while I was there, he would keep me safe and all of that. So I got that information. I sent in the document, I typed in all of his information and within like two to three weeks, I got another email saying that they never received sponsorship information. So I went back on the website, I plugged in on the information again, sent it again, and what I noticed was when I would hit submit, the information would disappear. Um, so I had to make several phone calls, several emails, finally got the situation straightened out, and I was able to get my visa, I think it was about a week before I actually had to leave. So yeah, I was panicking a little bit there. So the day that I actually traveled, I had to take three flights uh, to actually get over to Pakistan. And it took roughly 23 to 25 hours. I know I had some delays. I got a little bit confused because there was time differences, there was delays. I'm really not quite sure exactly how long it took me, but it was supposed to take about 23 hours, I believe. So my first flight was to Atlanta, Georgia. Um, my friend dropped me off at the airport. This is the first time that I was flying alone. It was the first time that I was traveling internationally. And it was the first time that I've flown since I was a teenager. So like the first time in 20 years. So <laughs> my friend dropped me off at the airport and I went in, there was like a kiosk where you could check in but because I was traveling internationally, I actually had to go to the desk. So I had to find somebody who could like help me figure out where I was supposed to go. And then once I was checking in, I gave them my visa, but they were asking for an ETA, I believe is what it was called. It was like an electronic 
something. I forget the name of it, but I started panicking again because I was like, all I knew was I needed the visa. And the lady looked it up and found out that the visa and this ETA thing that she was asking for were the same thing. For some reason, it just had different names. So once I got my bags checked and everything, everything was good. I went through TSA and then the first thing I wanted to do was find my gate because I was very, very nervous that I was going to not find my gate, miss my flight, lose my luggage. Like those were my, my main concerns. And yeah, so I went, I found my gate first. I didn't film a whole lot in the airports, mainly because this was my first time traveling alone and I was a bit nervous. And so I was on the phone with friends and family a lot, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I found my gate first and then just kind of checked out, you know, the shops and stuff around the airport. I went to like a candy shop and got some gifts for some friends that we were going to be meeting. And I went and I got um, a bagel. It was, so I was wearing a mask and this was probably the worst thing for my breath <laughs> to, you know, while well, I had to wear a mask for the whole time. Um, Cause I got an everything bagel that was pretty garlicky with, cream cheese, smoked salmon, red onions, and capers, <laughs> but uh, it was delicious. So my flight to Atlanta was actually a pretty short flight. I think it was maybe an hour, and thank God it wasn't a long flight. This plane was like so small and cramped and uh, yeah, just a little claustrophobic, but once I got to Atlanta, I had very little time to get from that gate to the gate I needed to be on for my next flight. So the Atlanta airport, I was kind of already nervous about being there because I had heard it's this huge airport and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I have this small amount of time. I'm never going to find my gate in time. So I found somebody that works there and I just said, help me. And I showed them my tickets and they told me exactly where to go. So I had to go downstairs and get on the little like train subway thing and go to like another end of the airport and everything was good until we started kind of like going through this area that looked like it was underground and I started panicking because I was like I don't think I'm going to the right place um I started worrying that I was definitely not going to the gate I needed to go to but luckily um I was heading in the right direction. I found somebody else that was actually going to be on the same flight. So I just followed them and just like ran through the airport to get to where I needed to go. And when I got there, so on the first flight, we were allowed a checked bag, a carry-on bag, and then a personal item like a backpack. So for the next flight, we still had the checked bag, but then the, you were only allowed one carry-on item. So I took my backpack and I had to check my other carry-on. Um, but luckily, like you could check right there at the gate. So everything was fine. I didn't miss the, the plane or anything. Um, but I did notice heading on to that flight that my phone battery was dying. So get on that plane. Um, this was actually with Qatar airlines and I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Um, it was just a really nice flight. I ended up sitting like in the middle section and I was like a seat in but that whole row of passengers was family so they asked if I could switch with the, one of them so that they could all sit together and I was like yeah of course <clears throat> so I ended up getting an aisle seat and the row in front of me didn't have a seat right in front of me so I had a ton of leg room so it was a, it was a pretty comfortable flight for me um, the family I was sitting next to was really sweet they were also going to Pakistan and so they talked to me a little bit we did have a lady on the plane, um, like a row or two up who, um, I thought we were going to have like one of those little viral, someone gets kicked off the plane moments. Um, but they were able to calm her down and everything was fine. And yeah, so that, that flight was about 15 hours. So I realized that I did not have the right charger cable for that plane. So I couldn't really use my phone a whole lot when I got to my next destination, um, but that was something that I kept in mind that I needed to find. Um, on the flight to Doha, uh, it was about a 15 hour flight. Um, they did give us, I think it was three meals and two snacks. 
and I wish I had filmed the food. Like there was some really good food and I don't remember everything that I ate on the plane now, but I know I had like a creamy cheesy pasta with mushrooms and one of the snacks was this, it almost looked like a like a McDonald's pie. It like came in the sleeve and it looked like it had that like similar crust. But the inside was like vegetables and chickpeas. And it was really savory and it was really good. <laughs> so after 15 hours, we arrived in Doha. And when I first got off the plane there, like I'd always heard Doha was this like really big airport. And I go in and there's only like the people that came off of my plane. Like it was pretty quiet. And I thought that was kind of weird. But once you get down through that little hallway, you have to go through customs and TSA and everything. And then it like spits you out into this main area. And there are people everywhere. <laughs> and there's so much going on. And I would love to go back and explore more. Um, but I was so paranoid about not finding my gate and then also the fact that my phone was dying. So found my gate first, went, had to check a couple different duty-free shops because not all of them had the charger cable I was looking for. So I think it was like the third one that I went to, I found the cable that I actually needed. So got one of those for the plane and then I waited in line at my gate for, I think it was about an hour again. I was so confused with the time differences and time changing. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what time it was. <laughs> but I waited for about an hour and there was a line that had built up that was also waiting for, you know, the gate to open. And these three guys came up and asked if that was the line for that gate and I was like yeah I guess so well the lady behind me started kind of fussing at them because they had cut the line because then they just kind of got in front of me and they were like no your line changed and she's like no it didn't like or they said your gate changed and she said no it didn't like nobody's told us we've been here for however long and you know nobody has said anything well right after that um one of the staff members came out and told us that the gate actually did change and it was on the other end of the airport and to follow her. So it was like everybody in that line, which was a lot of people just like stampeding through the airport, trying to get to the other end of the airport in time for the gate to open. So we make it there and we're met with three more staff members who tell us that's not our gate. And we were like, but we just like, ran across the airport we were told this is where we were supposed to go we, we followed another staff member and they were like no the gate you're supposed to be at is the one that was directly across from where we just were so we had to run back and the whole time i'm just checking with people i'm like are you going to this gate and they're like yeah i'm like it's for this flight right and they're like yeah so finally make it to that gate and found out that the flight had been delayed for another I think it was like another hour or two. So my 23 hour trip turned into, I guess about 25. So anyway, I just kind of sat, had a soda, waited till we could actually board. Um, actually, once we got through like the gate check-in, we had to sit in another lounge for like another, what felt like an hour until we could actually board the plane. And I found out later that there were some type of technical difficulties that they were working on, um, but they fixed it, everything was fine. And the flight to Pakistan was actually pretty smooth. Um, yeah, it was pretty uneventful. It was about a five hour flight, five, five and a half hour flight, something like that. And I landed in Lahore, it was like three in the morning. So, once I got there, I had to go through, of course, again, TSA and customs, show them my visa and everything, got my bags. Those had to go through and be scanned. And then, yeah, then I could go meet my husband. So uh, he and I went, we had some tea with friends first and then checked into our hotel. So the hotel that I stayed at was called Peak Tower Hotel. And this hotel 
was absolutely beautiful. It was the cleanest, nicest hotel I've ever stayed in. So I want to give you guys a little hotel tour. So we stayed in the one bedroom suite, which is 16,000 PKR or roughly $58 a night. When you first walk in, it opens into this big spacious living room and there's a little eating area as well. The suite also features a galley kitchen with fridge, microwave, stove, and plenty of cabinet space. In the living room, there is a smart TV and a full wall floor to ceiling window that opens up onto a balcony. And it comes with some beautiful views of Lahore. All the furniture is this luxurious velvety texture and all the floors throughout this hotel are marble tile. In the bedroom, there's a seating area, a king size bed, a vanity area that I used for doing my makeup, a smart TV, and a closet large enough for all of our clothes and accessories. The bathroom includes a muslim shower or like this little butt sprayer, uh, kind of like a bidet, and a large walk-in shower. The only downside to this hotel room was that the water got cold a little bit quickly. The hotel also offers breakfast in this large room upstairs. It's mostly served buffet style, but they will bring you fresh breads and eggs upon request. All of the seating were these large couches. And there was windows on all the walls and this little outside area as well. It was pretty foggy in the mornings though, so we didn't get the best views. For breakfast, we had parada, potato curry, chine or chickpeas in like this gravy or sauce, toast, eggs, and mango juice. This parada was fresh and very hot, and I think you can see the steam coming off of it here. And I think this is the chine that I'm trying here. This was really, really good, and it's my husband's favorite breakfast, so I'm going to have to learn how to make this. And this here is the potato curry. If I remember correctly, I think it was a little bit spicy. And this mango juice was very refreshing, but it felt thicker than juice, but like not quite smoothie texture.
And I just have to say, not only was this hotel beautiful and clean, but the staff there was so nice and friendly. So they called the room one morning to let us know that breakfast was ready. They actually checked with us um, because we had started eating breakfast um, at other places with our friends and stuff too, so that I could try some more of the different cuisines. And the manager actually asked us if everything was okay because we hadn't been to breakfast. And so my husband explained to him, you know, why. And he was like, oh, okay. And then like a few days passed and he caught us in the parking garage when we had just gotten back and had asked again if everything was okay. And my husband told him again, like, yeah, we're just trying different breakfasts. And um, he was like, okay. He's like, well, we changed the menu. So, you know, there's, there's new stuff up there for you. And so... Um, they were just really sweet. There were a couple days where I wasn't feeling so good and one of the staff members actually went to the pharmacy for me and got the medicine that I needed and brought it back and uh, yeah, they were just really, really, really nice and welcoming. So if you're ever, you know, traveling to Lahore, I would definitely check out Peak Tower. Well, I think that's going to do it for this video because it's getting kind of long, but I have several more videos that will be coming out to show you guys more places that I went to. I will leave you with a little teaser for what's coming up, and thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!